We give glory to God. We give glory to God. New video on on YouTube. New video on YouTube. What you think about that video? <laughs> what you think about the video on YouTube? What you getting from there? What are you learning? What is being reactivated in you? What's being reactivated in you? Reactivated means that you already knew it, but it just reiterates. It reestablishes. Reconvicts. Repositions. Pitch you back in the mind and the mold. Sarah's effectiveness was in Abraham. Sarah's effectiveness was in Abraham. Sarah's effectiveness was in Abraham. Gehazi's effectiveness was in Elisha. Imagine being around a man of such power. And Gehazi still didn't have power over his mind. Think about that. He was around a man of so much power, but still didn't have power over his mind. Think about that. In the presence of a mind dominator, he didn't have power over his mind. So you got work to do. You got work to do. The day that you're unwilling to work on yourself is the day that you lose. The day that you're unwilling to work on yourself is the day that you lose. You caught that statement there? The day that you are tired of discipline. The day that you're tired of right counsel. The day that you get weary with learning is the day that you lose. Always remember that. The day that you are disinterested in celebrating the presence of God and what he has done for you is the day that you lose. How have you celebrated the works of God in your life already? Because some of you are 20 years old, you're 30, you're 50, you're 60, you're 70, you, you are 30. You live long enough. Some of you are teenagers. You live long enough. For God to have done trillions upon trillions of things for you. Some of you never thank God that your blood cells are working. You never thank God that your respiratory system ain't giving you no issues. You never thank God that your brain cells, you don't got no um, aneurysms or or you don't got no Alzheimer's, all those different type of things. The day that you get distracted or disinterested in that is the day that you lose. Nobody just loses. They lose over time. A loss is a gradual process. If you take a note, write that down. A loss. A loss is a gradual process. You don't lose instantaneously you lose over time so nobody just kills their self kills their destiny kills their future 
It's a thought that lingers in their mind. Now, saying something that I caught that was real shocking to me was that Gehazi's mind thought that Elisha was stupid, even though Elisha had taught him all that he taught him. <laughs> Gehazi said, my master don't know what he's doing. That's the conversation he had. He said, my master don't know what he's doing. He's he going up there, let name and not give him that. So, so. All the mentorship that he had from Elisha, he still thought Elisha was stupid than him, more stupid than him. And then when he came back with the stuff, Elisha said, where did you go? He said, I didn't go nowhere. So he actually thought that even though Elisha was such a seer, that Elisha couldn't see him. <laughs> okay, moving on to popping bottles. <laughs> Living in constant harvests as a financial God. Living in financial harvests as a financial God. Living in constant harvests. There is a harvest angel and harvest ministering spirits underneath that angel. And these angels, these ministering spirits are responsible to validify the reward for sowing. They are first responders to the seed. First responders to the seed. Their job and their ministry description is to release the anointing of God, the power of God, the presence of God in the area where Satan wants to embarrass you. Did you catch what I just said? In the area where Satan wants to di discredit your royalty. These ministering spirits and these angels are first responders. They are the army of the Lord that restores money power back to you. Did you catch that? They are the army of the Lord. You don't believe that they're the army? Look at uh, Joel chapter 2. It, it talks about the canker worm, the palmer worm, the caterpillar, the locust. If you find out these spirits are working for God, they deteriorate a child of God's money so that the child of God will wake up to see how they're robbing God, which is very powerful. Remember, I told you that God gets everyone's attention through their economy and through their health and through their betrayals. There's three major areas where God gets your attention in your life. Listen to what I just said there. And this, 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 this priceless wisdom, this matchless wisdom that I'm giving you. There's three areas where, where God gets your attention through your economy, your money, through your health, your physical body, how you feel in your body, and through your betrayals. Where have you been mistreated by people? That you felt should have should have uh, uh, got a different response, and so God in Joel chapter two was getting the people of God's e uh, attention through that economy. How did God get the attention of the children of Israel and Moses' day through their economy? How did God get the woman at Zarephath's attention through her economy? How did God get the woman with the creditors after her her two sons? I think her two sons after the prophet had died. I think I consider him a false prophet because the brother didn't have no money. I can't, I can't, I can't. I'll never understand how a man can be in the earth and ain't got no money. Boy, even when I was a teenager, I, I was ready to get it. I was ready to get it. No, 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 no. Sit your religious self down. Everybody on the earth like money. Everybody. Everybody, Zendaya, I had stacks of money the other day. Zendaya, she looked around. She took the money. I said, hey, Zendaya, where you going? She ran off. <laughs> hey, hey, she took stacks of money. She ran all across. She ran across the house. Then I ran that way. I said, Zendaya, come out. She ran all the way back around the house. She ran inside my room. She ran through the bathroom. 
Then she jumped into the closet. She went underneath all my suits. She was hiding underneath there. I said, isn't that what you doing? <laughs> she peeping out from one of the jackets. <laughs> then they ran out with, with all the money right there. And here's the crazy thing. None of the dollars was folded. She was running and diving and she kept all of the money secure. <laughs> she wasn't worried about herself getting folded. She made sure that the money never got folded. You, you know what Zendaya do when she see money? She said, money. But she got a sore's heart. She'll give it right to me. She said, here. She got a sore's heart. But everybody likes money. Even the panhandler that's on the street with a sign likes money. They like money so much that they would tell you to give them money and they're not solving a problem in your life. They're not even following the laws to get money. But they'll still demand it from you. Give me $5. Give me $10. For what? Because I, I, I like money. I need some money. I, 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 I would like to do something. The highest level of response to God is when you give him what you have. Because I'm going to say this to you. What you have is holding who you are. The DNA of who you are is in what you have. So, 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 so somebody might say, well, well, no, no. The greatest thing that you could do is give him all of you. But there's many people that think that they have given God all of them. And that's why they hide away what they have. The greatest response that you could give to God is giving God all that you have. Remember what King Jesus said? He didn't say this woman, this woman with the two mites, she has surrendered her life to me. He said she has surrendered everything that she has. What Jesus was saying, I know that she want me to have her because she gave me all that she got. The disciples, these men, these 12 men, more so even Peter. Peter said, Lord, we have left all to follow you. Well, Peter was saying, Lord, what's going to happen to me? You saying as a rich man, it's hard for a rich man to enter into, into heaven. So what's going to happen to us? We done, we done left everything for you. See, you got to leave everything for Jesus. You don't know the path that God going to have for your life. You may have children that God going to call you not to see. You may have a, a, a spouse that God going to call you not to be around. You may have a, a, a business that God going to consume your time with that business. Your path when you say yes to Jesus is up to Jesus. It's up to you to say yes, but it's up to Jesus to give it to you. It's up to Jesus. And when you say yes to Jesus, do you know the only way how you can stay with your yes is when you give him what you have. Because when I commit my money to something, I can't walk away from it easily because my money is a part of me. My money is carrying my heart. It is my treasure. It, it has a part of my focus. It has a part of my soul. So when I put my money there, I can't just leave and just let go. I have to hold on. Many people, they fall prey to Satan because they have not invested much into God. So there's nothing that they have to hold on to. But when you invest much, you go give $10,000 to an organization right now. Go give $10,000 to them and see how quick it is for you to turn your back on the organization. It's impossible.
And watch this here. Remember what the Lord Jesus said, he that is forgiven much loveth much. He was talking about that woman that was worshiping him. They were trying to say that she was a woman of the streets. He said, Who, he that is forgiven much loveth much. Well, he was saying this woman reaction to me is way greater than y'all because y'all ain't really been through nothing. You think that you're too holy. You think that you didn't smoke, you didn't drink, you didn't have no sex, you didn't talk about nobody. You think that your life is so golden. That's why you can't bow down and discern who I am. She can bow down and know who I am because she realized that she done made decisions in her life. And I still protected her. I still provided for her. I still made it possible for her to exist. I didn't let certain things that was plotted against her take root in her life. She know what I've done for her because she know what she has done and how I responded. See, see, saints, the beauty of some of you all's past is this, is that that's the reason why you so passionate about Jesus. That's the reason why nobody can trick you. That's the reason why you can pray in the Holy Ghost. That's the reason why you can praise the way you praise. That's the reason why you can give thanks the way you give thanks. You can sow like you sow. You can forgive like you forgive. You can focus like you focus. You can worship how you worship. You can praise how you praise. You can honor how you honor. You can bow down. How? How? Excuse me. How, Makaramandarabaso? Zelevako say. We gonna be alright. How, Makaramandakaraba? We gonna be alright. Somebody touch your neighbor and say, We gonna be alright. Holy Spirit moving in my life. We're going to be all right. I'm not worried about what's happening in America. I'm not worried about what's happening at my job, what's happening with my children, what's happening with those connected to me. I'm going to be all right. You know why? Because I'm dwelling in the secret place of the Most High God. I'm underneath the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he's my refuge and he's my fortress. He's my God in whom I trust. You can't stop me. So financial harvests that flow through two streams. The blessing of the Lord, the blessing of Abraham. A divine a divine secret passageway that we have called the seed. Because many people will never understand the mystery of sowing and how it gets God's attention and how it gets your attention. Saints, I want to say something that has never been preached by any preacher, that the seed not only make God talk to you, the seed make you talk to you. Now that's fresh, boy. Ain't, ain't going. You're not gonna find that nobody on the earth. I promise you, God gave that to me, huh? When I was just shouting just now, the Lord say, "I want you to say this here: the seed not only make God talk to you, the seed make you talk to you. You actually become your own mentor. You actually become the one that advise yourself. What we doing here?" Why we ain't tell God thank you today? How come we ain't praying the spirit today? Girl, you ain't praying the spirit? Boy, what's up here? You ain't got no praise for God? Why you not meditating on the word no more? What happened? Oh, why, 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 why you not focused? Why, do you, why you don't got the same spiritual goals? Why other goals are entering in? Your goal is to get revenge. Your goal is, is to prove your point. No, no. Keep the goal of love thy neighbor as yourself. Keep the goal of worship the, 
the Lord in spirit and in truth. Keep the goal of if I am of Christ, I must crucify all of the worldly, worldly mindsets, all of the counsels, the ideas that come from natural, naturality. So, so, so hereby we find out a prophetic mystery, right? That the seed not only makes God talk to you, the seed makes you talk to you. Now this fresh, this fresh man. So, so watch this here. The seed causes you to have conversations with yourself about what you can do better. Now watch this. When you are sower, do you know that you will have your own summary for your day? So <clears throat> you'll talk to yourself, right? And say, you know, I didn't, I, I wasn't really all that focused today. Wow, tomorrow I'm gonna get this right. That's what happened. When you were seed sower, you got the automated system of God's teachings inside of you. So, so your thoughts will go in the direction of divine truth, div divine wisdom, divine righteousness. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. When you are sowing, there's, there's a, a supernatural transformation that happens to your soul where your soul can, 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 uh, it can have conversations with itself about the divine things that God has showed it. Wow. 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 The imagery of God, the images of God, the imagination, uh, the imagination system of the father would replay inside of your soul while you saw in money. See, these are the divine, um, the divine flows and circuits of the seed. Somebody write that down. My God, my God. The divine flows and circuits of the seed. One of the, the, the divine flows and circuits of the seed is this. Is that it will operate. It will manifest. And it will continue to bring you to higher levels of who you're supposed to be. Now, since the spirit of the Lord just said this to me, he said, son, I want you to say this. All right. The Lord said that your true identity is in the soul and the soul of your man of God. You caught that? Oh, man. I got, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, janda kata kata ta ta ta. Lebrosto koto koro dosi. Ezekora da. See, it was Simon that was fishing, but it was Peter that was sowing. It was Saul that was persecuting the church, but it was Paul that was sowing. It was David. That was the shepherd boy, but it was King David that was a sower, a true. It was Hadassah that, that, that was underneath Mordecai. She was growing up into a queenship, but it was Esther that was. Oh, my God. I'm about to take you to a level that you never heard before. It was Jesus. That came through Mary, but it was King of Kings that came through sowing. <sighs> it was Lord of Lords that came through sowing. See, see, ah, ah, it was Messiah. That came through sowing. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. So, so, watch this here. So, we see Abram. He, he, this is the person being delivered from tradition, culture. See, even Abram had to be delivered from culture. That's why I teach you not to promote no black stuff. 
If it was the other way around, I would be teaching that too. Don't promote no white stuff. Don't promote no Latino stuff. Because culture is cut off in the blessing of Abraham where culture is corrupt. Watch this here. There's nothing wrong with culture if it's in love. But when culture is birthed in hatred, you know that culture is no longer of God, is of witchcraft. Because it makes you rebel against God and how you treat other people. So that's why I teach you not to lean on culture because culture has become corrupt. And Abram had to be delivered from culture. That's why God said, leave your father's house, leave your father's culture, his customs, his traditions, his mindsets, how he thinks, how he produces, what he believes, his philosophies, his ideas, his imaginations, his consumptions, his, in, his, his, his insights. Man, I would listen to this. I would listen to this. I had a brother write me one time. He said, I sure don't like what I've heard people say about you, but I sure do love watching you. <laughs> so, so listen. Am I going to listen to people say that Michael Jackson was... Was molesting children or, or if Michael Jackson performed, I'm going to be right there. <laughs> come on, come on. Come on, Michael. Du -du 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 -du. Come on, Michael. Do some magic moves. Michael was grabbing his crutch, but I don't know what he was grabbing because he didn't want to do nothing. <laughs> Michael was the only one that ever grabbed his crutch. And Michael, you the, you the only one that grabbed your crutch your whole life. And you had a wife? I think the woman said that she had sex with Michael Jackson in her head. I, I think I think she said she had it in her head. She had. She wasn't going to touch Michael. She said that. Michael. He he. Woke up in the sleep down the karate chapter. Saints, you better make sure you get the right husband, the right wife and stuff because because people will fight you in the sleep. They'll beat you down in the sleep, they'll wake up talking to them. You know, I'm, I'm, I ain't do nothing. What you talking about? You hit me in my daggone nose. I got a nosebleed, cuz. <laughs> that ain't blood. That's just ketchup. You, you had some fries earlier. You had some fries. This ketchup. And not no, not no nosebleed. Didn't you say you was on your period? Well, maybe your period decided to come out different. <laughs> and then watch this here. There's some men that can fight, but there's some women that can fight better than the man. So they, the man, the daughter, God, you better pop. Oh, they knocked them out. Listen, I'm not, somebody call 911. I'm not going, I can't see. You knock, you knock my, you knock my diaphragm off. I can't see good, I can't see. Every time you talk to him, he look, he, he look like Joe Biden. Ain't no son in here. told him not to leave the house. He trying to leave the house in secret. So he try to act like he don't know what he doing. Tulsa. He up there fumbling at the door. Tulsa. I see you trying to leave. I can't. Oh, I, I didn't know it was the door. I thought it was the bathroom. <laughs> in my day, I've seen women that beat up men, doggone it. 
And one of those cases was, remember I told you about Paul Pimp? Paul Pimp was a skinny man, and, and he was with a big old woman, boy. That woman would sit on him, boy. And, and I'm not talking about the pleasurable sitting. That's all I want to say about that. <laughs> he, he was in pain. <laughs> Moving along strong. Moving along strong. <laughs> Poor Pimp was crying out. Hey, somebody help me. Somebody help me. Like, Poor Pimp, like, you... You got to understand, you can't beat this woman up. She got massive strength that you don't know about. She had four chi pieces of chicken. <laughs> she had four pieces of chicken last night behind your back. She got four pieces of ch chicken worth of strength that you don't know about. Them chickens was mighty chickens. They used to win battles when they was bop, bop. It. These was mighty chickens. She, she got an impartation that you don't know about. That's what you don't understand. She got impartation you don't know about. The blessing of Abraham and the blessing of the Lord are two major forces that lifts a, a, a sower out of an ordinary life into a world of miracles. Did you just catch that, people of God? It's powerful stuff here. The blessing of Abraham and the blessing of the Lord are two major forces that takes a sower out of ordinary lifestyle into a world of miracles and you'll live a lifestyle of the miraculous through the seed if you're willing to listen to the holy ghost about this secret passageway called sowing now i became a student of the seed and i found out that the seed is not a download it's a mentorship class you know a download can just come to you but a mentorship class, it, it creates an atmosphere for it to come to you. You see what I'm saying? That's why you're not going to meet many people that understand the, that, um, that mantle, that mystery, that ministry of sowing. Because it doesn't come just through a download. It comes through a mentorship class. You got to be mentored into sowing. You're not going to be able to sow in your own wisdom, your own understanding. The father going to have to keep on repetitively letting you hear about it. Because um, the sowing river is one of the most stubborn rivers in your belly. Wow. 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 I never heard that before. But I'm hearing the spirit of God teach me this as I'm teaching this to you. Uh, um, and, it, and it goes in line with forgiveness. You got two stubborn bellies. Are uh, uh, too stubborn. You got two stubborn rivers that get dammed up the most, jammed up the most, and that's forgiveness and sowing. So, so that's why when you start sowing, that is like you got power over every other river. You, the river of your mind, the river of your forgiveness, the river of your focus, the river of your endurance, the river of your consistency, the river of your servanthood. That's why you have power over all the other rivers because. Um, the seed is often a river that's dammed up. It's jammed up. And Satan closes that river so that Satan can have access to other rivers. The river of your love, the river of your patience, the river of your uh, faithfulness, your longevity. Wow. People of God, you got to listen to this and let this sit in your soul. That sowing the seed is one of the most stubborn rivers inside of your belly. And so this river, it doesn't flow easily. It, it has to take a strong anointing to break it out. So those waters can flow. Because those waters going to uh, encounter so much adversaries. The adversaries of your bills. The adversaries of your debts. The adversaries of your worries, your fears, the adversaries of your living arrangements, the adversaries of, of your car payments, the adversaries of your child daycare fees, the adversary of taxes. And, and so even Jesus said, pay unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar, but pay unto God what belongs to God. 
And, 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 and saints, the truth of the matter is that so many people have perfected Caesars. Caesar, I, I, oh my gosh. Here's what the Lord just said. Even the pizza place is called Little Caesars. Oh my gosh. Some of y'all going to catch that later. Because Caesar wasn't supposed to be so big. Wow, 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 wow. People have made Caesar bigger than Caesar was supposed to be. Some of y'all going to catch that later. Some, you've been following me for that long? And you don't, you don't know why I just, you don't know? You've been following me? Huh? You caught that? Huh? Little Caesars. Because cause, cause Caesar wasn't supposed to be big. Even the pizza place got Caesar in its proper bracket. Because paying unto God is going to matter for our eternity. Watch this here. The, I heard the Holy Ghost say, make sure that you also strive for a good credit report in the spirit. Because according to heaven's economy, make sure that you on time with your seed. See, see, remember why I told you a sower is, is so powerful because they are the only people on the earth that discern how to pay God. Wow, wow, wow. People don't think God needs to be paid. Have you ever listened to a, a fool tell you God not concerned about no money? That's like you saying, my wife ain't concerned about no food today. She's not concerned about nothing, you know. We're just going to live poor, and she has me, and uh, that's all she needs. She doesn't need to eat today. Uh, she doesn't need to uh, have anything today because she has me, and as long as she has me, she has everything. You know, I'm, I'm everything. You know, I am everything. I'm food, I'm clothes, I'm, I'm living arrangements, you know, I'm everything possible. Uh, um, it's everything. It doesn't matter if I saw her faint a couple of times. She just fainted a couple of times. She felt the Holy Ghost on me. That's what she felt. She wasn't hungry. She wasn't having a relapse because we don't have any water. You understand? I told her there's toilet water. Um, it's recycled. Once you flush it, it's recycled water. You know, it's duh. Like, see, I'm her teacher. If I, she didn't have me, she wouldn't have known that. She wouldn't have been smart that it's recycled water. She could drink it. What rhymes with drink it, Jada Pinkett? Um, so, and remember, she was married to what will? So I came to give her the will of God. So it's all it works all together. All things does work together for the good of those that, you know, love me. You know what I'm saying? So it, I saw her pass out a couple of times. She got back up. You know, doctor said that she was dehydrated. Yeah, she was dehydrated because she wasn't. She wasn't enjoying me, which is the water of life. You understand? So th that's all. I just, I knew what was happening all along. I knew that she did. I'm the water. And remember, Jesus told her, I'm the water. You drink of me, you never thirst again. So, so she wasn't in my presence. So she got dehydrated. When you're not in my presence, you get tired. You get dehydrated. So, so I understood. That, I knew that the doctor was a natural doctor. Remember the woman with the issue of blood. She went to the doctors. They messed her up too. They jacked her up too. They jacked her up too, so there's nothing new about that. You know, doctors are always wrong, you know, so. Sowers are the only ones that discern that God deserves a salary from you. Wow. 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 And, and, and saints, sowers are the only one that discern that they should cut a check to God and pay him for his work that he has done for them in the week. Oh my gosh. Saints, saints, sowers refuse to leave their divine employee, their divine Messiah unpaid. Huh? They, huh? they, they discern that their divine employee deserves a salary the same way that they want somebody on earth to pay them 
for their work. See, see, saints, you see how you have said, I'm not going to work and nobody pay me. But it's crazy how God has been working for you since you was in your mother's womb. And how much, how much did you pay God for all the work? So, so saints, um, it takes a level of wisdom and prophetic grace to even discern that some of your large sowing is actually back payment. That you owe God, you see what I'm saying? Because he has been an employee working as a volunteer because he wasn't getting paid by you. And he still protected you from that car accident. And, and that house fire, you didn't burn up in there. In that abusive relationship, you didn't get set on fire. You didn't get shot. You didn't get burnt up. You didn't get killed. And the drugs you took, it couldn't kill you. God kept your body working even though the drugs had shut down your system. You didn't know that you had OD'd when your eyes was open. But see, it was the spirit of the Lord that kept you alive because he was working for you. And when he could have resigned and said, I'm not working for you no more. I'm going to go find another job. I'm going to go find somebody else to work for. He said, no, I'm going to stay right here. I know that you're not listening to me. You with somebody I didn't tell you to be with. You living somewhere I didn't tell you to live. You going places I didn't tell you to go. You having children that I didn't tell you to have. You having job entrepreneurships that I didn't tell you to involve yourself in. You going to schools that I didn't tell you to attend. And I'm still going to be your employee. How much more you owe it to God to stick with God. How much more you owe it to the Lord to stay where he bit you? How much more do you owe it to the spirit? When God told Elijah to hide by the brook Cherif, it was because God was hiding by the brooks for Elijah for years. God wasn't telling him to do something. That was out of the ordinary. God was saying, Elijah, I want you to pay me back. The woman at the well didn't know that Jesus was the one that caused water to flow out of that well four weeks ago. Six weeks ago. Two years ago. Because that was the same well she was going to all her life. It was Jesus that put water in that well for her to. So now he said, give me a drink. You don't know it was me that was giving you a drink when you was with five husbands. You didn't know it was me giving you water. 